I'm going to start this video off by saying, Bullet Club is for life. So it's too, it's too sweet. Woohoo! Wow, I gave out a flaming on match on a Raw TV show. Raw was really good today. Oh, um, shoot, what was I going to make? Take the. The Bullet Club kicked me in the. Oh, I should. That's a good idea. The Bullet Club kicked me. The Bullet Club kicked me in the. You'll see what I mean, folks. Hello, I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. That was the first weekend in a very long time. Oh, wait a second. I can feel a groove coming on. Okay, now the moment has passed. And that's just because I had a date this weekend. There was no wrestling. Um, I didn't want to see Smackville, only because I just went to a house show of my own. So I'm like, I don't want to see a someone else's house show. So wow, because then Friday I had my wrestling. Wow, that's rare. I had like a weekend. What did I do last weekend? Oh, wow, there was no wrestling last weekend either? Was there? No, there wasn't. Wow, I had like two Saturdays off. That's weird. But I'm going to be making up for it because this week, this is the first show of the week. I always have my Monday review show, my Raw review show, my SmackDown review show on Tuesday. Wednesday, -ish. Wednesday, th maybe at late Friday. I'll be doing my predictions list for Triple Mania. Triple Mania is coming up. Yep, and I've kind of written down the matches. And wow, Tito Santana is still wrestling. I love the names they have, like Eho. The Vikingo. I know what that means in Spanish. Well, wow, that's pretty sad. And then, uh, depending on a couple things, this guy, Hobo Tom, is going to be doing an R R and R show. It's a little bit more video because Triple Triple A's just they, they don't care anything about stuff. Kind of hydrate a little bit. I just want. I went to the grocery store way earlier and I was like, a little sparkling lemon, lemon water ice. It's really good. Uh, actually, after this video, or while this video is processing, I have to go hobo to do my job. But I'm here not to talk about hoboing. I'm very upset they closed up. They're building something and they close off prime hobo area. But I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. And wow. This was a fun show. Mainly because I think Paul Heyman, I think now has full control-ish over what happens on Raw. So I'll tell you what, this was a fun show. Um, I'd like to start off because um, I actually just made while they were doing the commercials, I, I made finally another gift for everyone. Again, if you, and the way you get a gift dedicated to you, you can either email me at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com, leave a comment, publicly subscribe. No shame in liking pro wrestling, folks. And 
to the Discord group on on at WooTube if you somewhat interact with me. I write your name down on my list and I send you a, I send I have a couple gifts and a few short videos that I like to get like to send out to people as a thank you. And it's free for now because I don't I don't know. I have no idea if I'm ever gonna get monetized. And Patreon Yeah, that's work for people with a much more dedicated studio setup. And honestly, why should I make you guys the YouTube world pay for listening to the one, the only well Hobo Tom. You you'll, you can listen to me for free. And I think one person actually tried me to send me a super chat. I'd rather honestly be super chatted I think be fully monetized. I think the requirements are a little bit less too. I have to figure stuff out later. And I have to apply for some more jobs too. So that was that for that was um a website to fill in the stuff. So I think I might be doing some stuff tomorrow. We'll look up look up a whole bunch of stuff tomorrow. But no uh, Let's talk about some wrestling. Wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Monday Night Raw. Oh, wait a second. My my shoutouts. That's what that's what I was doing. Shoot, this is gonna be a like video. I apologize for that. The Monday Night Raw. I think because it's three hours, there's lots to talk about. Especially for this Raw, because this was really fun. So Batista. Wait, but yeah, Batista. I can't even read my own hearing. Batista Balls. Yes, so. This, you're my tag team partner, goes out to you. And the self control booth. As I can fully read your name, and it's an easy name to read. You're going to get this. Take it all off, Nikki. So again, thank thank you guys very much for interacting with me. It makes wrestling go by a little bit quicker because you never know what's what's gonna happen. So first of all, it was a twenty four seven promo. That's what the WWE has to do because that was really good. That was entertaining, and I think it only took five minutes most. So after a five minute promo, it was a recap of the whole twenty four seven title picture. I mean, they got right to wrestling because it started off with a mixed tag team challenge of Drake and his amazingly beautiful Renee Michelle versus who's his wife now. That's right, not 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 his fiance. I have to remember a wife. That's a whole other different legal thing. Um, versus r Truth and Carmella, and with the entire twenty four seven locker room surrounding the arena, so they act like a whole bunch of lumberjacks. That was pretty cool. Um, to get into this match, it was, this was actually fun. It was well-timed, well-played out. We'll see what happens soon. So Drake Maverick, he goes for the quick roll-up on R-Truth. Um, again, very much like the Rockstar Spud character. He shows very little offense. And he gets tossed out by R-Truth, caught by the loser locker room, walked around the ring, and, and literally thrown power bombish style back in the ring. So that was pretty cool. Um, that was just funny. Uh, 
hey, our truth he still knows his wrestling moves. Um, it was really just a truth showcase of what he could do. And he did pin Drake Maverick. Every so often um, during the match, Renee Michelle would run in the match and she'd take on Carmel. So I wonder if she's going to be added to the WWE roster. I don't know if they did this because I, I think she was in like some lingerie fighting league thing. I think I heard that mentioned. I think I actually saw that when they heard, said that. It's kind of like powder puff boxing. Yeah. 20 years ago, yeah, it would have been great, but 20 years ago, there wasn't YouTube. So, oh well. Um, every so often, Renee Michelle would, would run in there against Carmella. Probably to hide the fact that Renee Michelle wasn't a pro wrestler and probably was just learning how to take bumps and stuff. She could run in, be held back, so that, that was pretty cool. Uh, Carmella did get one good slap. Wow. On Rockstar Spud. I'm sorry, Drake Maverick. Um, eventually, Drake got pinned by our truth <laughs> and, and then this in itself was a ham sandwich match. Then the whole lose, loser locker room gets involved. They all pile on our truth who gets pinned by Mike Canales. And the fact that Mike Canales came out of the bottom of the pile, his hand, it's one of those football scrum things where there's like a fumble and you just see like all 22 guys make this like dog pile. And generally whoever comes out with it, I guess wins. But he came out, the referee's like, yeah, him, the guy with the belt. And Mike Canales came out winning. And he went back to hide in the official's locker room. He locked the door. His wife, Maria, who's showing that pregnancy. Oh, wow. What would I still... I wasn't seeing women... She came out and <laughs> she began to bang on the door. Let me in. Everyone's just like, whoa. We don't want anything to do with her. She's, she's buggo nuts. <laughs> but <laughs> he demands to be let in. And Mike's like, how do I know you're my wife? And not Carmela trying to trick me. <laughs> I forget the whole quote. I got the important stuff. Because if you don't, I'm going to kick you in your vagina. <laughs> and to that, he opened the door. And that was so good. With such a unique storytelling angle. And we'll get back to the host two later. Then we had a gauntlet match. So WWE, I think, is learning how to time their product better with commercials where you're not having hard restarts and it's not a two out of three match where one's really quick, one's long, and like one's medium. So they're doing a lot better job with that. And I want to say, I know Eric Bischoff's doing things, but in everything I've heard of, he's a lot better with dealing with TV people and more so the production aspect. I mean, it's not a hobo studio production, obviously, but... He's more in tune with the networks and to what they want and to get the timing down. So you have someone who knows that someone who knows the timing and TV production of stuff. And Paulie Heyman, I'll tell you what, this is a Heyman stamp all over it. 
but this was a really darn good show. So we have a gauntlet match. Um, starts off re- uh, to to determine the U.S. champion, the U.S. Cha- U.S. championship challenger to AJ Styles' title, and and this is just this all, all all kinds of bocce. But I only do this in one shot. I'm not doing multiple shoots. That's way beyond my patience level for doing stuff for free. So you have to bear with me a little bit. They should make a Botch Mania video somewhere. Who knows? But it was a gauntlet match to determine the challenger for AJ Styles' U.S. Championship. I guess they picked numbers, and Ray and Cesaro picked one and two, or, or two and one, or whatever it was. They were the first two and then. So I'm going to do this like I've done in the past. Um, I'm going to go match by match, and then give the whole thing a rating. Oh, and by the way, Mike Canell's whole thing. That was fun. I enjoyed that. That's that's the whole thing. That's ridiculousness. It's a ham sandwich. I give it a ham sandwich instead of a can of soup like I normally do, mainly because I was entertained. It was different, and of course, it had to for think that he's going to get kicked in his vagina. That that was. Wow, that was a Paul Heyman line. I haven't heard a Paul Heyman line before. But let's get back to this gauntlet match. The gauntlet match starts off with Rey Mysterio versus Cesaro. Cesaro's really good at He's amazing mat wrestling. Went for quick pins very often in the opening part of the match. Really slow start, really good though. And they wrestled a little bit through the commercial. It was just wrestled, but at least... It was a little action, but it's not like you're missing much from the TV perspective. And the live crowd is still watching a wrestling match. Hey, it's a win-win. And then, uh, again, Cesaro then started to get really physical. Again, the typical kicks, the European uppercuts. Some of those look so good. Then there was that Flip over the top, balance her karate onto the apron. I don't even know how they do that. I don't think my cat and I could do that. And my cat weighs 10 pounds. I'd probably hurt her. Or probably save her and wind up killing myself. I don't know how two grown men do that or coordinate that or even prat. Like, how do you really practice that? You just have to say, well, if I hold on to you, we'll go over together. Just hold on there. I'll hold on to your leg. Use you as a... I, that was awesome, whatever it was. Cesaro was good enough to do that, too, because I know Sami Zayn did once hit a Canadian destroyer on Cesaro during one of their matches, so I know that was also pretty cool. But they did that, uh, and that happened... That led up to a sliding splash. I mean, Cesaro just beat him up so good. But then there was like a super bulldog off the top rope. Followed up by a five-star frog splash. Rey Mysterio earned that victory. And I'll tell you what. Cesaro didn't look too shabby in that. That match in itself was a surf and turf match. Then Rey Mysterio gets to face Sami Zayn. Um, Sami Zayn just beats him up a little bit. But Sami Zayn is the victim of a roll-up. Sami, 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 Sami. Rey Mysterio wins by roll-up. This part of the match is a can of soup. Then Rey Mysterio gets to face Andrade. Rey is thoroughly tired. Andrade is much more physical with this. Um, both these individuals, I'm kind of shocked that they never did a hair versus mask thing that they're doing between Blue Demon Jr. and Dr. Wagner Jr. Because that would have been an awesome match. Although they could always still hold it off for WrestleMania. It's definitely a, a, 
a big four level pay per view event. Not the main of not the main event, but that deserves to be on one of the big four pay per views. Not any of the smaller ones either. Uh, Selena Vega gets involved. What did I put down here about Selena Vega? Oh yeah, well, a little bit she got involved in this match, just enough. Uh, again, both of them were going that he. Wow, El Ilo Andrade Cien Almas. He hits that hammerlock DDT. He sweeps the leg like something from judo. I'll tell you what he puts bank on that. Ooh, it was a good match. It was on the short side, but still, it was really good. This is another surf and turf match. Uh, oh, am I so young? It's the face Ricochet. And I don't think these two were in NXT at the same time. So I think Andrade... I think already relinquished the belt or lost to Alistair Black. I think I remember seeing Andrade with... No, I never saw him with the belt. I saw Alistair Black with the belt. No, he didn't. Oh, I saw Tommaso Ciampa with the belt. He came in because Johnny Gargano ran in the ring and decided to beat him up a little bit. Um, Ricochet came in, I think, right around that time. So I don't think they ever met in NXT. It was just a matter of the timing me off. I'll tell you what, this was a near NXT level event. Both of them turned the speed factor up, which has made this match actually really good. Um, Andrade is so physical. Ricochet's the rolling dropkick was amazing. The reverse Rana. Selena Vega again tries to distract Ricochet. I get distracted by Selena Vega, mainly on how short she is. But again, that was a really good, fun match. This match was really fast paced. I'm going to give it that. Gonna, I, I wrote that down. Um, Ricochet eventually does hit the, the 630 Centon. You know what? I was right the first time. This is a surf and turf match. And overall, the whole gauntlet match, minus the one, this is a surf and turf match. I'll qualify that by saying it's, not, it's, it's probably like some... It's probably like mock tender steak and crab cake surf and turf. So it was really good. And that leads us to Kayla doing an in-ring interview with Ricochet. Ah, it is what it was. Kayla, Ricochet, I think, was speaking unscripted. It was short. I'm sure Kayla gave him said, listen, just say something from the heart, how excited you are for the opportunity, and that's it. And that's what he did. So, again, the whole interview process was okay. And then Summer Slams in two weeks. That's pretty impressive. And, oh, I called it. During this where I said, you know, Maria Canales is going to become 24-hour champion. So Mike and Maria are, are in the back in the officials' room. And Maria says, you know what? You're the champion, but not for long. Or something to that effect. And Mike's like, what, what, why? What do you mean? She's like, well, my baby needs a championship. Mike's like, yeah, got the championship. No, my baby needs a championship. Put on your back. Mike's like, huh? Like, get me get on my back? And for, I think, I think a, a smile broke, Mike Canales broke a smile because he's like, oh, me on my back, it's my wife. 
But then he, but then the official is there, and he's like, "It is." And realized that Maria was going. Maria told him again, "Get on your back, Spike, and pin you." He's like, "Why? My baby needs a championship, and you're not man enough to carry it. So get on your back, assume the position, and I'm going to pin you." And he very he got down to his knees first. And then just proceed to lie down. Maria Canales put his put her foot on his chest as like she was trying to cover up herself because Mike could probably see everything and I don't know, she wore that nice little split dress. That's amazing. Or she looks amazing. And then the referee was there, counted one, two, three. Maria is now the 24-7 champion, so they're going to give that probably a break for a little bit, which makes sense. Um, she'll probably, Michael will probably pin her while sleeping. And we'll see how, how, how that goes. It might be like, like, a, like a finger on top of her forehead when she's asleep pin. Or like, just, or, oh yeah, when she's asleep, I can see him. Just putting his like finger over her lips, or whispering like sweet nothings into her ear, ear while the ref goes. And he gets his hand raised. Well, I can see them doing this for a couple more weeks, maybe a month. It's going to get long and boring if they don't do anything with this belt. So I'll tell you what, at some points in Raw, the 24-7 championship has been the highlight of Raw. And then we get to a moment of bliss with Alexa Bliss. They show um, Fit Finley showing Natalia how to get out of, or how to counter this armor. Um, eventually, Becky runs in, <laughs> just knees him right in the nuts. Fit Finley's a bad seller. He forgot how to sell that. Because he, he's just like, oh. And then Becky Lynch beats up Natalia. And Fit Finley, like, seconds later, comes to and gets Becky Lynch off of Natalia, who stuck Natalia in the disarmor. And if I got need there. Oh. It would probably be a good half hour before poor Natalia got any help whatsoever. Fit Finley has to learn how to sell. He has to go back to selling 102. And then, honestly, in my opinion, the match of the night, because I was shocked, it was the Usos versus the club versus the Revival. This was so good. And what, I don't know, there was some guy like shouting stuff too. And every time there was a two count, the whole crowd, because it's a club, was always too sweet. So that was good. It gets the crowd involved. It gets them hyped up. Um, the, for the first half of the match, this actually seemed like a classic New Japan style match. Very slow, very methodical. Still good tag team work, especially between the, re I'll tell you what, the Usos, the club, and the Revival. They could go chasing this. They could chase each other for this title for like another two years, and it would be really fun. Just like like hot potato between the three of them. You toss in the Viking Viking Raiders. Whoo, that's gonna be good. And I mean, whoo, whoo, but whoo. Again, the revival's classic tag team. Isolation tag team, quick tags. The club, isolation tag team, quick tags. Eventually the Usos pick up the pace, though. And it's just, I'll tell you what. 
this was a really good, exciting, fun tag team match. They built up to everything. There were some spots. I mean, for a while, it wasn't bad for a long time. It wasn't anything special, but when you realize, oh, wait, they're actually building, they did some spots there. Again, the revival is so good with the blind tags. Um, there was some um, electric chair bulldog. There was an over the top rope suplex DDT. Oh, poor Carl Anderson. That gave him flashbacks to when he was getting dropped on his head all in New Japan Pro Wrestling. But that was just amazing, though. I mean, it had just a build to it. There was suspense. It was a surprise. Um, eventually, Luke Gallows gets the tag, the blind tag, on one of the Revival. Because the Revival hit the shattering machine. And then it was this kind of spot, 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 like they always do. But then... Carl Anderson to hit the spine buster on Jimmy Uso. Jay was the legal Uso. I, I forget. They, I get confused. So if I, if I switch them around, I apologize. But say Jay Uso is a legal person in there. The revival gets shoved out. Magic killer on Jay Uso. Jimmy's out from the spine buster. The revival's outside the ring. The club win. Bullet club is for real. It's for life. The club come back. They won. <laughs> Again, it was a good. It was. I figured. Oh, Carl Anderson's gonna eat the. Carl Anderson's gonna eat the pin again. But no, Carl, um, Luke Gallows got the pin. Hey, the club win. It was a good build, fast paced. They had all kinds of weird moves. And again, like the top rope duplex DDT. Only way I can describe it, folks. It looked like an OMG moment from one of the video games. And the club win. And this is my filet mignon match. I forget last time he gave a flaming young match to someone. At least on Raw. Every so often a pay-per-view by WWE will get that. Especially if I'm partial like it. Like AJ Styles. I don't know. He's had some surf and turf matches. But AJ Styles can put on flame matches. I think the last one I gave was between him, maybe Daniel Bryan. I don't know. There's a select few that have earned flaming on matches. I know AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan. Who else in WWE? Who knows? Maybe I'm really, really am. Well, John Cena, because John Cena and AJ Styles was a flaming on match anyway. But again, oh, I'd like to say because I did see the sign. Support, Russell Talk. Give us, give them a subscribe, and give this guy a subscribe too. So, <laughs> only because I saw that sign. Then the celebration begins. AJ Styles goes full party mode. It was like crab cake, beef medallions, shrimp scampi, bottles of champagne. The club come back. Taylor's there trying, trying to get a word. And he's like, can I go away? Woohoo! AJ's on top of the table with a bottle of champagne. Yes, yes, yes. Two sweets for everyone, baby. Baby. And then, the then of course, you have the high points of the show. And then you go to, I guess, one of the lower points. It's the Viking Raiders versus Cole Carter and Johnny Jones. 
jobbers. Um, I guess the only thing that this is kind of getting old. I give them one more week before I really downgrade it, only because I think the the one jobber I think Cole realized I don't want to be anywhere near these two guys. They're going to kill me. And tried to run away, except for he was caught by. Eric? I guess. See, I still remember them as Ro and Hanson. So whoever Hanson is. Yeah. So, yeah, he yeah, they beat them. It was a squash match. There was a Viking experience. You could even hear the ref say, come on, just get it over with. It's like, come on, bring it home. <sighs> One more week of this, though, and then I'm going to, I, I promise, I'll, I'll downgrade it. It's okay. It's making them look strong. It's a can of soup. Then you have Becky versus Alexa Bliss. Um, again, the lead up. Um, Becky starts running down, and then said, Said Nikki with her where's her Celtic pride? Nikki's from Scotland. She has Scottish pride. She's from the Jutland. You're from Ireland. Or Ireland. However it was pronounced back then. Anglo Saxon Jutes and Celts. So Nikki Cross is from Jutland. Which is modern day Scotland. Uh, uh, Becky Lynch is a Celt because she's Celtic from Ireland. So, how did Nikki Cross get Celtish pride? Boo! Like England, oh Ireland, England, oh Ireland, England, oh Ireland, oh hey, oh hey, oh. Shamrocks and roses, shamrocks, roses, thistles. Two. Sweet. But yeah, that's how the song goes. Fancy song, and Scotland's known for its thistles. Ireland has shamrocks, clovers. Yeah, shamrocks and rose. Yeah, sh shamrock, shamrock and clover. Some freaking thing. But different. I don't know. Becky Lynch has to go back to school or go back to becoming a flight attendant and learn her countries. Boo, Becky Lynch. Um, so this match, um, it's okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this taunting Becky Lynch. Uh, Nikki eventually gets involved. Just it's slow moving hitting. Wasn't that great? And Alexa Bliss does have that double knees where she hits the knees, rolls through that, does a backflip double knees, and then went for the pin. So that was pretty good. Um, eventually, Alexa heel tweaked her ankle. And wait a second. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Becky, this is still kind of short. You know, like help her up a couple times. Help her to get higher a couple times. This match in itself, you know, only because I've seen that heel tactic way too often, it's a can of soup. But then. Nikki Cross was very upset. So then we have a match between Nikki Cross and Becky Lynch. It's kind of a classic Nikki Cross match. It's not bad. Um, <laughs> I know there's always that one spot where the one wrestler's on the outside of the ropes, the other wrestler's on the inside, and the one wrestler grabs the one's head and, and kind of drops down. Nikki doesn't have to drop too far. She just goes down to her knees 
<laughs> that's enough to get to get the whipping effect across the throat of to get Becky's neck whipped against the top rope. Um, that snap down again. She didn't have to go far. It was okay. Uh, she hit the manhandle slam. After Nikki avoided the exploder a few times, Nikki got in her office. She got in her crossbody. She's not crazy, Nikki, like she used to be in NXT, which is not necessarily a good thing because I like crazy Nikki. But, um, yeah, it was a manhandle slam. Becky Lynch won. Ooh. It was a ham sandwich. At least there was a finish. And then Natalia comes in. You figure, oh, Natalia, oh, because uh, Alexa Bliss miraculously got her ankle okay. And Nikki were beating up on Becky. So you figure, oh, Natty's coming in for the save. No! Natty swerved us! And I wonder if they're going to turn Becky Lynch heel soon. Have you seen Natalia heel? Natalia heels like whiny Kmart mother. I want to speak to your manager. So we'll see what happens there. Then Maria's doing a photo shoot and Braun's just there. Like, whoa. Like, aren't you going to give a pregnant woman space? Braun did not move. Who knows where that goes? <laughs> Maybe Broad, you're the father. She got these hands. Whatever. Again, it had a Paul Heyman stamp all over it. Then we have Seth versus Dolph Ziggler. Dolph worked us all because heartbreak kid music, you think I'm sexy, came out and it was his Titan Tron and he came out. The whole crowd was chanting. She was cheering and, and going crazy. They're like, HBK, HB. You're not HBK. You're Dolph Ziggler. Boo! Uh, so Seth, uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler, uh, hits the, Dolph hits the DDT on April. It's pretty good back and forth. Dolph does go for that dirty pin. For some reason, he gets away with it pretty good. Uh, he hit the zigzag, but was, Dolph has learned the zigzag's not a finisher. Right now, it's a signature move. Um, and that allowed... So Dolph's all shocked and everything. Seth eventually recovers. Hits his own super kick on Dolph. Then Brock Lesnar comes in and just decides to beat up Seth. Let's beat up Seth Rollins! And that's a... Bullock Club reference. Like, let's... Beat up John Cena. Let's beat up Seth Rollins. Hey, that makes sense. Just suplexes him all over the place. F5s him into the ring, ring post. F5s him onto a chair twice. They go to commercial. He come back. Brock F5. Seth onto the hospital. The, the ambulance gurney. Half the crowd's cheering for him. Half the crowd's booing him. That was awesome. Kept on going back to it. it was, that was really good. Then we had a Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Oh, wait. Um, before I get to that, I'll say the match itself. It was kind of entertaining. It was better than the match they had a, a while ago where the crowd just would count down. I think it was an Iron Man. So, I was... Brock made that match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we have Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns. They just brawl. Um, it's an unsanctioned match, obviously, because there's one official who's trying to break him up. Just Samoan on Samoan headbutt. Uh, then Drew got involved. And then, of course, with Drew getting involved, Cedric Alexander got involved. Uh, Cedric got suplexed into the stage. Drew is not Braun Strowman. 
Then the Usos show up because Roman was going to go through the table. Then the club shows up. Cedric is somehow got somehow found his way on top of the Titan Tron and does a splash. They all go back to the ring. Uh, Roman Reigns, the Usos, and Cedric Alexander stand tall. So we'll see this going on. You know what? Just because it was a fun pile of nonsense, this was also a cheeseburger. So overall, this Raw was really good. It was really entertaining. There was some surprise things going on. I mean, obviously, the squash match and Becky retaining her titles was very predictable. But overall, it was a fun show. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And I'll see everyone again tomorrow. Bye.